All right, guys, I'll be quick. I'll be honest. Uh, my presentation probably won't be the best. Had a bunch going on, but just kind of wanted to share some of the different things we do kind of technology-wise in the weight room. A lot of these aren't groundbreaking. Uh, several of you probably already have these different pieces of equipment. If you don't, uh, I'll tell the ones I kind of highly recommend, uh, you know, and things of that nature. But just going to talk about implementing technology uh, into your training sessions. All right, the main kind of pieces of technology we use, uh, number one is Team Builder and kind of like a conflict of interest statement. I've wrote for them on like blogs before and stuff like that, but that's not gonna make me talk good about them. Uh, so they're not like paying me to talk good about them. It's just, I've got paid for writing a blog or two for them. So conflict of interest, there it's out. Uh, but if it sucked, I'd tell you it sucked. Uh, but like strength and conditioning wise programming, for me, that takes what used to take hours. And part of the hours is I suck at Excel and uh, things like that. So that's partly my own fault. But what used to take hours for each week or each six block session, now I can get done uh, in basically 15, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, I go back and check all the athletes data in there. Like for example, we had a kid, log Tyler Jones logged his vertical jump and it was 243 inches and it was supposed to be 24.3 inches. So you gotta go back and, and kind of look at things but you don't have to input everything and it saves you a lot of time in the strength coach. We'll go over different ways to use it. Uh, free lap timing system, hands down, the best piece of strength and conditioning equipment I've ever bought in my entire life. Uh, it's done more for our speed development than anything I've ever learned, any clinic I've ever been to, or any lift we've ever done in the weight room. Hands down, the best thing I've ever utilized for you know, speed development. There's different timing systems out there. There's probably better ones as far as, you know, I don't know. Uh, but the ease of setting it up, it literally takes five seconds. I'm not having to match lasers. I'm not having to do anything like that. It takes five seconds. I turn the cone on. We put one at 10 meters. We put the other one 10 meters away or whatever we're doing. And, and we're rolling within five seconds. And we can roll athletes one after another. We don't have to wait a certain amount of time before they run. Uh, so hands down, the best thing I've ever bought and better than anything I've ever done in my entire life for strength and conditioning. And then uh, this is something we just kind of got into recently, like these different specialty bars. And we'll go over how we use each of those. We only have like specialty squat bars, but they make specialty deadlift bars, specialty bench bars, uh, all these different things. Sp thinking of some of the bench ones, like Kabuki has one, or lots of people have them, where instead of your arms being like this, it's basically like this, uh, and you can sell the hell out of your baseball coaches on things like that, because you can tell them it's shoulder friendly for their, their pitchers and, and all that, and, and they'll love that. Uh, and then this is, 30 years old, uh, but just jump mats. We just kind of started integrating those with Team Builder and, and they've been great for us. So we're gonna talk about Team Builder integration. Uh, so up to this point, basically every position has done the same program. Uh, but with some of the college teams I work with, we'll individualize, well, here's your bigs program, here's your skill program. Uh, and so something we're gonna do this summer with the high school kids is Bigs are going to have their own program. Skills going to have their own program. It's going to get a little more, you know, kind of specific with what they do. Right now, they're still going to do the same program. But Team Builder makes it super easy to do that. Uh, you can just create calendars, and then you assign it to X amount of kids, and you're ready to roll. Uh, they do. It's, so it's an app. Uh, the kids have it on their phone. Cole probably has it on his phone. We don't have service, or I pull it up. Uh, but your workout is delivered to you on the app. Now, I'm still kind of old school, so I still write it on the board uh, and we go over it in front of the board, but everything they need to know is in their app and say they have, this is in the presentation, but say they have percentages, well, it doesn't just give them the percentage, it gives them the actual weight. That way I'm not having to wait for some knot head to freaking read a chart and he's 50 pounds off because he doesn't know how to read. All right. Uh, what... Y'all tell that story about Moody. That's a good one. But <laughs> go ahead.
So this kind of helps with that. I just thought of that when I was talking about it. That's one of the, a good story I've heard. Uh, but with the kids having their phones, it hadn't been an issue. Uh, you know, I don't do it with the junior high specifically for that reason because I think it would be an issue with them. Uh, so they don't bring their phones in the weight room because I think that would be a, a crap show. But senior high it hadn't been an issue. It's not like we've got kids freaking texting or talking to their girlfriend or taking freaking videos or anything like that. Uh, I don't think we have Cole may tell me different, but we, we do our we do that we like to that. Yeah. And they use their phones and we really haven't had any problems with junior high. I mean they're they're on the deal and they're looking for stuff. Yeah. I I think it it's like Google Classroom in your classroom or any of that type of stuff. It meets the kids where they're already at and so they're not like you may have to correct a kid every now and then, but it's not something they're gonna run with and they think it's kinda cool for the most part, so they're not gonna step on your toes and make you basically get rid of it. Uh, but like we talked about Team Builder, there's Train Heroic, there's Rack, like Coach said, uh, there's all these different features out there, and they'll give you trials, so if it's something you're interested in, try them all, and then kind of figure out which one works for you. Uh, for me, it makes it super easy, because I can get a leaderboard for say vertical jump or split squat jump or single leg jump, whatever it is, or 10 meter fly, 40, I can get a leaderboard in five seconds just by clicking the leaderboard button. It compiles all their data a hell of a lot faster than I can, and then bam, it's there. Uh, so like I said, as a strength coach, it saves you time. And then we don't do a lot of these. I think we've done like one or two times, uh, but you can do like journals, questionnaires. There's a lot of stuff it does that I don't take full advantage of. Uh, but you can like basically have your kids log what they eat, uh, certain things like that if you really get into it. And then here's kind of what it looks like. So if you're an athlete, this is what you see on your phone. And then every single exercise has a video. They don't really use that feature just because I'm there with them. Uh, so I kind of demo everything, but if they need a quick refresher, every single exercise has a video. Uh, here's your 10 meter fly. That's what it looks like on their phone and then you just enter the time you got. So I don't have to, as a coach, keep up with every single kid's time. When they run, bam, their time's entered, and then you can get a chart from every single run they've ever done. Uh, here's like hand-supported split squat. We don't do percentages on that. Uh, so they just log the actual weight they did. And then here's like a split squat jump. You log your height, you know, in the inches that you did. Uh, and like I said, benefits, it tracks all the athletes, and uh, you can have years' worth of information at your fingertips uh, in extremely a short amount of time. So that, like we said, that's team builder as a strength coach or as someone who does the strength and conditioning for your school, uh, not just team builder. I'd look at one of those if you're not using it, and, and it'll save you a lot of time, and they're not all that expensive. Uh, all right, so like we talked about, the free lap timing system, like I said, it's the very best thing I've ever bought for strength and conditioning and, and like speed development. But it's basically, we got the one, there's different packages. You can get two cones uh, and a sensor, or you can get two cones and, and the Bluetooth chips. Uh, we have four cones, and then we have four Bluetooth chips, and I'm buying extra chips kind of as we go and find a little bit of extra money. But four cones and four chips, uh, if you're giving them the right rest period, things could go a little faster, uh, but four cones and four chips is kind of a good starting point if you're trying to run like 40 to 50 kids uh, or so. If you're running more, you know, you may want more. But uh, the thing I love about it is, for the most part, it's a hell of a lot more accurate than like a coach's stopwatch. So say we're timing a kid in a 10 meter fly, it's hard to do on a stopwatch anyways, but. So say we're timing a kid in a 40, all right? Well, week one, I have that kid at, at let's use Cole for an example, all right? I'm not using your real 40 times, so I don't know him off the top of my head, but say Cole runs a 5'3", 140, all right? Well, the next week, I got him clocked at like a 5'3", or I got him clocked at a 5'2", 9, all right, on my stopwatch. Well, you know, that's not, it's 
decently accurate. It's an okay measure, but with the free lap, it's pretty much 100% automated. It's 100% correct. If Cole goes from a 531 to a 529, well, he got two 100s of a second faster. And, and the kids enjoy seeing that, and they compete like hell, you know, especially our linebackers, to see who gets the, the fastest one uh, and creates competition right there. We got a couple of videos of our kids running, and you can get kids to line up and run 40s anytime, you know, but I've never seen kids run as hard as they do when they actually have a tangible number they're trying to beat and they have a tangible number they're, they're trying to see when they get done with the event. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. I, the guy giving a presentation on technology, I kind of suck at technology sometimes. Uh, we use it for the 10-meter fly and the 40, and then for our bigs, we're going to start doing like 10s and 20s. But you can integrate that all into one run. So say you run a 10 meter, or say you run a 40, you can get a 10 meter fly, you can get a 10 yard start, and you can get your 40 time all in one uh, race. Pretty easy. It's not super hard, not super techy. I just haven't got into that yet. I do them all individually. Uh, and then one thing you can do, Coach talked about this, uh, and I want to get that from him is you can convert their time. Tony Holler speaks about all this. Uh, you can convert their time to miles per hour. And so a kid knows how many miles per hour they run. And then that you can kind of record and rank and publish those like he talks about. Uh, and it gets kids competing again. Uh, there's a formula for it. I just enter them one by one and do it that way. Uh, but Coach said he's got it figured out on Excel where you put their time in and then instantly it pops out their miles per hour. So if somebody has that, please share it with me. It'll save me uh, more hours. Awesome. Like I'm terrible with Excel and, and sheets. Let's see, make sure I hit everything. Yeah, that's it. Yes. I Traditionally, I've been logging them like in an Excel sheet, but now we're starting to push it over to Team Builder and the kids log their times. And like I said, I'll like. Are they, are they like showing up on screen? Yeah, sorry, it, it goes over that. Yeah, that's a good question. But it, it either pops up on a coach's phone or like an iPad, things like that. Yeah. And then they have a feature where it costs more money. But basically, I think you can send whatever info you have, and then it inputs it automatically for you into like Excel in, in different things. How long does it take success for kids through three or four days? How long does it take? Every kid can get two to three runs uh, in basically 20 minutes of the actual running of it. So it goes pretty quick. Here's just a couple quick videos of kids using it. Uh, got a boy having buried here, Cole, in his cowboy boot. But you can see the kid took off, and then instantly it pops up on their screen there, and then you can yell out their time. Okay, I like that. And you can, there's different ways to do it. You can, I've seen guys get TVs, you know, where the kids, and it, it can be away from the sensor, and get TVs where they see their time as soon as they cross the finish line in front of them. Uh, so you can do different things. And you don't have to wait basically any time until you run your next one. That kid finishes through both cones, and then the next kid can go. The next kid can go. The next kid can go. So each trip, is that how many people can run at a time? Yeah. Yep. And no, 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 it's just, it's just one. One at a one time. One at a time. Just make sure you go Like, I started out with two chips. All right? And so my kids would run the 10-meter fly. Then I'd have another one go in there. They were walking back. Well, they just wait in line at four chips. Now it's like, I don't have to, they don't have to wait at all. It's like, boom, here goes one. Boom, here goes another three. Where do the you know? chips go? They go, so it's basically like a clip, and they just go, they talk about putting it basically right under your belly button on the top of your pants. And it clips on there, and then that's where it goes. Uh, you've got to talk to the kids a little bit, especially when they get kind of older, about clipping the clip on before they go, just pressing down on the clip and kind of reseating it. And then, because if you don't, a lot of times they get loose and they'll fall off. But that doesn't happen like a lot. As long as you give it a good squeeze, you're ready. So you can only run one kid at a time, two at a time. On two cones. Gotcha. But if you have four cones, you could do you two lines. Yeah. Okay, so I know everybody thinks about answers, but what is the cost of something like 
Uh, we got the four cones and four chips initially, and we got the Bluetooth one. So there's a Bluetooth model, and then there's like a regular model. The regular model comes with like a screen that the time pops up on, and then the Bluetooth model, you can use your phone, you can use iPads, you can use whatever you want, and then it pops up there. Uh, we got the Bluetooth one, four chips, four cones. I think it was like 12 or 1300. Uh, but one good way to do it, if, you can, if your other sports are on board, is you can talk to your other sports and be like, hey, let's split this because everybody's gonna use it. Uh, so you can talk to your track, your, yeah. your basketball, whatever it may be. Our track, our track guys would be all over that Everybody throw in 200, yeah, and then now you can, it doesn't cost near as much. Here's a couple more clips, kids. Kids are using it. We don't have any four fours, unfortunately. Uh, well, that guy's 250 and burning a five flat, so he's pretty good. Did you say there's a way to get a bigger screen? Yeah, like you can connect it. If you have like a smart TV, you can connect it to a. Because right now, that seems to be what we would get with our school looking for it. Because of the code and the other kind of document or anything. Yeah. Yeah. What's the max? How far? Uh, you can use them, I think, for up to like 400 meters. Uh, so track can use it that way. Uh, but we just we don't ever do that with football, so that's you know kind of how we use. It. Like this kid here, it's, the video is kind of small, so you can't really see it. But this is. Uh, one of our kids, he's probably, what's Caden, probably 320, 315, 320. And you can see how hard he's sprinting because he actually has a tangible time instead of, hey, guys, we're going out and running 40s and, and you know, we're not getting the time on it. I've noticed, like, a tenth at least to maybe two tenths. Uh, but that's one of the things I want to talk about. I'm glad you brought that up. Like at first it almost does the negative of getting kids motivated to sprint because you got kids that went from running a four, four or a four, five to running a four, six or a four, seven. Uh, so at the first it does a little bit of negative, but once they kind of forget about that, it, it kind of reinstates itself. And I, I'm glad you brought that up. But it's a, as far as a kid, if you got a kid wanting to go to college and all that, it's a hell of a lot more accurate yeah, yeah. than, you know, seven. You see, wherever, well, we got 17 kids that run a 4 4. Nah, you yeah. probably don't, you know. If you do, that's awesome. Hey, Derek, have you ever done the 5 2 5? We haven't. Uh, I haven't been smart enough to figure that out. Oh, I have. But I think you can. Okay. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you're on Twitter, Coach uh, Weaver, Weaver, or whatever. Yeah. Um, he wrote a, like an e-book. Yes, I've been wanting to check that out. And, and if you're a chapter, he'll probably send it to you for free. He sent it to me so I can send my ID and try to get him on board with this. And he's got all different kinds of things like how to use the free lap timer. I think it's literally called like how to get the most out of your free lap timer. And it's all about it. So that'd be a good resource to check out. Uh, and then these have been around for a while. You know, a lot, everybody here may have them. Some people may, some people not, may not. So we're going to go over them. Uh, but different specialty bars, but we're going to talk about specifically, and we just kind of started using these because we just got them, uh, different kind of specialty squat bars. So this is uh, the Buki Transformer Bar version 2. Uh, I'm fortunate that Coach Simpson, when he was there, did a – freaking awesome job with fundraising and so there's times of the year where they're like hey coach smith we got this left out of this budget that i had no idea the hell we had uh what do you want to do with it and so uh, this was leftover technology budget for football which i didn't know was a thing uh but we got one uh and so this was leftover money from that and i went now would i normally buy one of something for all the kids to use in strength and conditioning, no. But the plan was to buy more as I found more pieces as we go. 
Uh, so I bought one of these. And it's basically, you know, like your SSB bar, but we'll go over it. It's got seven different settings on it. And there was a first version. And so the first version, you basically had to be a NASA astronaut to be able to freaking adjust it. All right. So you had to be a, you had to have a damn engineering degree and solve calculations on your damn calculator to figure out what the hell you wanted. And then they realized coaches weren't that smart and they made the second version and it has six settings and each one tells you exactly what it does. Uh, so it's a hell of a lot easier. It basically, you can make your body think it's a front squat, a back squat, a high bar back squat, low bar back squat, and then like a hinge pattern uh, type deal based on how it's set. Uh, and the second version that takes no effort. Uh, it's from Kabuki. The negative thing I'll say about it is we ordered it in June, and I think we got it a month ago. All right. Uh, they're they're out of Portland, and so when all that crazy stuff was happening, and, and people were yeah, they were literally in the area. Their building was in the area that got took over. So they're like, hey man. You know, your bar's ready, but we ain't going to get it. Uh, you'll get it when we can get back in. Uh, so right now, it was 24-week wait time. I think now they're down to like 12. Uh, but still a little bit of a wait to get one. And then here's the different settings. You just pull a pin. It doesn't take long at all. But here you see you got uh, goblet squat, front squat, SSB, high bar, low bar, and then a hinge and you just pull the pin on both sides, takes five seconds, and then that's what makes you know the kids adapt to. And it's great because it's a hell of a lot less stressful on the back, and if you got a kid that just sucks at a front rack and you're doing front squat, it, it takes that out of the, it's, you don't have to worry about it, they just hold it. Uh, so that's the Kabuki Transformer 2, and then we kind of got these, we got five of these, it's an elite, FTS SSB yoke bar. This one is 10 times more budget friendly and 10 times more readily available. Uh, but it's still a high quality bar. They're kind of the first ones that came up with it. And basically what Kabuki does is takes a piece of equipment that's been around forever and then puts a new twist on it. Uh, but they kind of came up with the first one. This is a great bar. Uh, the negative I'll say about it, I just found out the other day that highly pissed me off uh, was that the diameter of the bar is literally like a centimeter smaller than a regular bar. So if you have like the pressure clips, the turn and twist, they, it won't work on them. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Now, I wish I'd known that before I bought them, but it's still a great bar and we're still gonna use the hell out of it. And like we said, benefits of these type of bar, number one, it's just a hell of a lot better on the kids back. Number two, it's just something new, you know, that the kids, haven't probably done before, so they're gonna be a little more into it. And then what I really like about it is you can do like a lot of hand-supported type work. Uh, think a lot of times when you're doing single leg work or, or even like a heavy back squat, a lot of times the thing that's limiting factor is not the kid's lower body strength. It may be their, you know, their core in terms of not just their abs, but everywhere on their, you know, their trunk may be weak. And so they'll fail a lot of squat, a lot of times in a back squat or whatever, just based off that more than based off their lower body. And in this, you can really load it up and, and that, you know, kind of trunk, trunk strength doesn't become a limiting factor. And my favorite movement with it is a hand supported split squat. And I, I wish these videos were a little bigger, but we'll make, it, we'll make it work. But it really allows the athlete to drive through one leg. And we're actually gonna do a study with it. We started last week. And we're gonna do basically 10 weeks of hand supported split squat with what everything else we've already been doing. And we're gonna kind of see the difference that makes in speed uh, in, in jumping ability based off that. So I'll have that for you, you know, in a while. Did you say you've already started that? Yeah, we, well, we started it this week. Okay, so you're gonna And we're not gonna change anything but introducing that movement, you know, as our. Because with high school kids, they're gonna improve regardless but we wanna see kind of how that rate of improvement changes based off that. But like I said, that's one of my favorite movements you can do with it, the hand supported split squat. This is one of our softball girls. Uh, she's probably like 90 pounds herself. And she's, you know, that's not a lot, the big load, but she's repping 95 pounds on one leg. It's her first time using it, 
But girls wise, if you lift girls, you'll have girls probably go once you've done it in a while. Uh, I went to West Florida. That's where I kind of learned these movements. Uh, and they had their volleyball and football team lift together. Uh, and they had girls freaking squatting 225, hand supported with it uh, on one leg. And one of the things I really like about it, you can't see it here. Let me see if I can pause it. But you can kind of get similar angles to like your acceleration. When you're accelerating in a run, you can kind of hit those similar angles with the lift. Here's just a couple more videos. You can really get good speed on it. Yeah. Uh, this is a good point. So our girls used them for two days and two sessions and didn't drop one weight, uh, not one single weight because they're a little more, I, I don't know, careful, careful and, and focused on what they're doing. And then our guys did it. Uh, and in the morning session, Crumby's brother dropped it like freaking four times and pissed me off. So he went to dumbbells. Uh, but if they would have told me the diameter of them were a little different uh then that wouldn't even been an issue because the weights would have stayed on there but if you get two kids one on each side to keep the weight on there they stay pretty good senior high wise i don't think we had maybe one lose a weight but he was fine he's still alive this is one of our tight ends uh like i said you can get heavy as hell on this but this is our first day using it, so we kind of wanted to be a little bit smart, but I still got a little bit of meathead in me, so I let him go pretty heavy. Uh, and he smokes 365 for a double on one leg. Well, I guess we only got one of them. But he smokes 365, and you can tell it moves pretty damn fast, too. And then, uh, like I said, this piece of equipment's 30 years old, uh, but we just bought one. Again, you know, kind of giving you ideas for if you're wanting to utilize this equipment. Football didn't buy this. Volleyball bought it. But I use it for everybody. And I'm trying to get them to buy one more this year. That way we got more than one. Uh, but I got volleyball to buy it. And we use it for a variety of different jumps. And just like the free lap, you plug it in, you jump, and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, it doesn't take long. It pops right up, next person up. Right up, next person up. Uh, this, I think, was 500, uh, and you can do, like, verticals, split squat jumps, different things. And, like I said, this ain't new. We just have started integrating it with Team Builder a little bit, and so now kids are logging their stuff, you know, as soon as they jump, and, and it gets a little more competitive uh, as we head into summer. Uh, but different things you can do with it. You can do, obviously, a regular vertical jump. Uh, you can do, like, a three – contact jump so basically three vertical jumps in a row and you can kind of track your jump average as you go uh, which for football this football clinic you know that's probably not near as, as helpful because football is usually one effort and then you rest one effort and then you rest as we're at basketball you may jump up for a board three four five times or volleyball you may jump up you know three four five times before the play's dead uh, Vertical jump, depth jump, like jumping off of something onto it. See now, you can jump split squat jump, single leg jumps. Uh, you can do your approach jumps. So for your other sports, if you're trying to get them to buy it, uh, you can do like approach jumps. So say volleyball or basketball, you can be off it, step on it, gather, and then jump. There's all these different things you can do. And that's just kind of ways you can pitch it to get other people to buy it for you. Bad camera angle, but he's jumping 30 inches here uh, on both legs. Now, I will say there's a formula out uh, that completely corrects it. So, as far as accuracy, if the just jump says you jump 35 inches, well, in reality, you jump 32 inches. Or it's probably, you know, a little more than 32, but between 32 and 33. But as far as, like, replicating your jumps, it's completely accurate as, like, a a swatter. So if you jump 32 and then the next time you jump 32, you jump the same height. It's just, it overestimates it a little bit. And, and there's a correction formula for it. 
uh, and that was two systems ago, so they may have fixed that in the new ones. I have no idea. You can also time sprints with it, but good luck figuring that out. Uh, like it's one of those things like we talked about, you got to have a NASA degree uh, to be able to do that. You basically put it 40 yards away and then you blow a whistle and somehow it knows when you blew the whistle or when you yelled. Uh, but it's not very user friendly in terms of like uh, the, the free lap. You got to wait 15 seconds to run another one. and It's just a, a crap show. I've never used it for that, but it does have that. And then here's just kind of a clip of our kids integrated in the team builder. So here's a kid jumping, here's his team builder account, and this kid's reading the thing, logging his jumps uh, each trip. Uh, I won't say that's it. Uh, we'll leave time to talk here, and I got a couple of round tables in case I went too short. Uh, but like we talked about, uh, price wise, the just, just jump mats around 500, uh, the free lap. It's basically based off what you want to buy, but you can say 800 and up, but split that between all your sports and that's not much at all. Uh, and then Team Builder, there's different accounts. Uh, I have one for my business and it's a little more than our, or it's a little less than our school account. Our school account, we got the premium, medium, and it has every feature you could think of uh, that I don't know how to utilize yet, but I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, but Team Builder, I think basically 500 to, uh, if you want to spend more, it gets up to like 12, 1300. Uh, you got to pay every year, right? Do what? So you got to pay every year. Yeah, uh, but they will cut you a discount if you pay multiple years. Uh, so it saves you a little money that way. How often do you test on the Uh Once a week at least, sometimes more. Uh, yeah, uh, well, we hadn't been doing that with the jump as much, but. We'll, this next program we're in, we got a jump built in uh, basically every week, if not twice a week. Any other questions? Yeah, I'll tell you one of the ways we do free up some money from Derek is I don't know what it stands for, but our superintendent has an RMAC grant. Yep. Kind of, I'm sure. But 